production of sound. Dear students, sound is a mechanical wave that is an oscillation of pressure transmitted through some medium composed of frequencies within the range of hearing. Sound needs a medium to travel. Students, we know that sound is a sensation or feeling that we hear. Sound is produced with a vibrating object. The motion of materials or objects causes vibrations. Vibration means a kind of rapid to and fro motion of an object. Let us look at some examples of how certain sounds are produced. Human voice The sound of the human voice is produced due to vibrations in the vocal cords. Animal sound When a bird flaps its wings, a sound is produced. Bees buzz as they fly because of the rapid movement of their wings. Their wings make the air vibrate, producing a buzzing sound. Musical sounds Musical instruments produce many different sounds in various ways. Some instruments need to be struck by an object in order to produce a sound while some instruments such as violin produce sounds when one or more of their strings are plucked causing them to vibrate propagation of sound dear students sound is a mechanical wave that is an oscillation of pressure transmitted through some medium composed of frequencies within the range of hearing Sound needs a medium to travel. For sound to be generated and heard, it must have three things. They are a source, a medium through which to pass, and a receiver. Let us assume the source is the speaker's voice. The medium through which it is transmitted is air, and the receiver is the listener's ear. When sound is generated by the speaker's speech or when an object vibrates, it sets the particles of the medium around it vibrating. The particles do not travel all the way from the vibrating object to the ear. A particle of the medium in contact with the vibrating object is first displaced from its equilibrium position. It then exerts a force on the adjacent particle which gets displaced from its position of rest. After displacing the adjacent particle, the first particle comes back to its original position. This process continues in the medium till the sound reaches your ear. During propagation of sound in a medium, the particles of the medium do not move forward themselves but the disturbance is carried forward. Disturbances propagated through air by mechanism of particle to particle interaction, they are termed as mechanical waves. Compression and rarefaction Dear students, Compression is the application of balanced forces to different points of a material or structure. That is forces with no net sum or torque directed so as to reduce its size in one or more directions. Rarefaction means decrease in the density that is a sound wave causes periodic rarefactions in its medium. Can you tell the most common medium of sound? Air is the most common medium through which sound travels. When a vibrating object moves forward, it pushes and compresses the air in front of it, creating a region of high pressure. 
This region is called a compression. C. And when the vibrating object moves backwards, it creates a region of low pressure called rarefaction. R. The compressions are regions of high air pressure, while the rarefactions are regions of low air pressure. Look at this image. It shows a sound wave created by a turning fork and propagated through the air in an open tube. These are the regions of compression and these are the regions of rarefaction. Reflection of Sound Dear students, sound is a mechanical wave that is an oscillation of pressure transmitted through some medium composed of frequencies within the range of hearing. Sound gets reflected at the surface of objects. Like light, sound also gets reflected at the surface of a solid or liquid. The reflection of sound follows the same laws as for reflection of light. Angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. The incident wave, reflected wave and the normal lay in the same plane. Sound waves can be reflected by large, hard, smooth, vertical and far away surfaces, example, walls, buildings and cliffs. Echo An echo is a reflection of sound arriving at the listener some time after the direct sound. Typical example is the echo produced by the bottom of a well. Echoes are produced by the reflections of sounds. The sensation of sound persists in our brain for about 0.1 second. To hear a distant echo, the time interval between the original sound and the reflected one must be at least 0.1 second. If we take the speed of sound to be 344 meter per second, at a given temperature, say at 22 degrees Celsius in air, the sound must go to the obstacle and reach back the ear of the listener on reflection after 0.1 second. Hence, the total distance covered by the sound from the point of generation to the reflecting surface and back should be at least 344 meter per second into 0.1 second is equal to 34.4 meter. Thus, for hearing distant echoes, the minimum distance of the obstacle from the source of sound must be half of its distance, that is 17.2 meter. This distance will change with the temperature of air. Echoes must be heard more than once due to successive or multiple reflections. Reverberation Reverberation is the persistence of sound in a particular space after the original sound is produced. A reverberation is created when a sound is produced in an enclosed space causing a large number of echoes to build up and then slowly decay as the sound is absorbed by the walls and air. The repeated reflection that results in this persistence of sound is called reverberation. A reverberation is perceived when the reflected sound wave reaches your ear in less than 0.1 second after the original sound wave. For example, a sound created in a big hall will persist by repeated reflection from the walls until it is reduced to a value where it is no longer audible.
structure of human ear. The ear is the organ that detects sound. It not only receives sound but also aids in balance and body position. The ear is part of the auditory system. The ear consists of three basic parts, the outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. Each part of the ear has a specific role in the task of detecting and interpreting sound. The outer ear is called pinna. It collects the sound from the surroundings. The collected sound passes through the auditory canal. At the end of the auditory canal, there is a thin membrane called the eardrum or tympanic membrane. The eardrum moves inward and outward as the compression of rarefaction reaches it. In this way, the eardrum vibrates. These vibrations are amplified by the three bones namely the hammer, anvil and stirrup in the middle ear. The middle ear transmits these vibrations to the inner ear. Inside the inner ear, the vibrations or the pressure variations are converted into electrical signals by the cochlea. These electrical signals are sent to the brain via the auditory nerve and the brain interprets them as sound.